That was a great uh, reception considering most of y'all never heard of me before. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that's right. Well, listen, this is your poem, Ashley Sendiva. You ain't even know it. I was sitting back there and I was like, dang, I'm about to write this poem. Because I was watching you talk to uh, the ox. Chuck the mad ox. And I was like, dang, yay. So I wrote this poem. It's called Big Pretties. I just wrote this right there. So fresh off this. Right on, right on. Big pretties, smile, stand up straight, engage, dress their bodies in flattering cuts, colors, patterns, conquer their fears, and fly. That's your poem. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Right on, right on. So, this is my book. She said, I'm a published author. I'm published in a few different other places, but I self-published this on my way out of the country. I ran over to Ghana, like she said. I got knocked up, came back. I got a little boy. We trying to make everything, like, you know, reconnect. But in the meantime, in between time, I'm here. I actually um, beasted out a draft of this essay about being a creative and being a new mom on the Mark train up here. So it's been a good day for a creative stuff. So, you know. I'm going to uh, read you a couple of poems out of this book. This is my first collection, um, and it's mainly about growing up in D.C., but it's kind of like a every ghetto, every city, but I know in Baltimore, how many of y'all from Baltimore? <laughs> word up, word up, and I'm not going to take a whole lot of time, but if y'all like, you know, we share the parkway, so we kind of like same but different, you know. Um, right, so I know y'all probably feel how I feel, like, when you grow up and you watch TV and you watch movies and it's like New York, LA, New York, LA, New York, LA, and you like, wait, ain't nobody gonna put my city on? So I did a book to put my neighborhood on, not even just my city, but my city, because y'all might also experience this in Baltimore, but in DC, we have this like, everybody knows DC as the White House, the monuments, blah, blah, blah. They don't know nothing about Deanwood. They don't know nothing about Fema Heights. The same way in Baltimore, I'm sure y'all had places that's like, people know the Oreos, people know the Harbor, but they don't know nothing about Baltimore, like how y'all know about Baltimore. So that's why I wrote the book, but I'm not gonna like talk y'all to death about that. I'ma just go ahead and read you a couple of poems and then give the mic over to the next person. This is called Underworld, After a Mother to a Son. Take care as you begin to descend. The first step wobbles and will accelerate your slide to the bottom if you lack balance. Otherwise, pockmarked concrete roughly escorts naked palms down the steep, narrow case to the rough foundation where memories bounce off low ceilings and dance in shadows around the furnace. A tumbling dryer conjures the essence of an old woman trapped inside her body in an upstairs bed until echoes of her recitations disturb the girl faking sleep inside you, afraid to wake up in the side of a recurring nightmare. Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. And suddenly you want to hang crystals from the PVC pipes Want to uh, Google which color quartz will absorb the pus trapped beneath old scars. Erase the fingerprint stains from immature flesh and beam your thoughts out of places so dark there ain't never been no light. You are tired of picking splinters, yanking tacks like ticks from your bleeding souls and wondering how she managed to keep on climbing, turning corners and reaching landings on feet disfigured after walking miles in someone else's narrow shoes. You duck to the height you stood the day you discovered two abandoned bras among the trash bags and spider webs, still elastic enough to cap the mushrooms blooming from the flooded plains below your chin and wish the washing machine that has summoned you to this underworld could bleach dry all the dirty laundry you've collected in all the damp, shadowy corners of which this basement is neither first nor last. That's the underworld.
Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm going to do, actually, I was going to do that one, but I'm going to do a shorter one and get out of y'all's way. This is called Genesis for Alvin Ailey and my neighbor, Mrs. Shirley Children Saxton. Now, let's give you a quick uh, context. Miss Shirley Children Saxton is the uh, sign language interpreter for Sweet Honey and a Rock. She needed some help with her computer. And so I was like, you know, I like helping people, old people learn technology. So I was not to call her old, but it is what it is. Um, so I was like, hey, you know, I'll help you out. And after I helped her, she was like, hey, here's a ticket to come see Sweet Honey and the Rock and Alvin Ailey. They gonna do Revelation. And I was like, bam, okay, I don't have no money. Um, I don't even have hardly nothing to wear, but I'm definitely not gonna miss that. So I got up there with my little broke clothes and my little freelance, you know, and got a ride up there and this is the poem that I wrote in the dark, kind of like how I wrote your poem. In the dark, like scribbling on some paper with tears streaming down my eyes, watching them do Revelation, like, oh my God, I'm so glad I came. <laughs> so this is Genesis for Alma Ailey and my neighbor, Mrs. Shirley Children Saxton. When the house lights darken, no one will notice the red polish failing to halt the runs in your borrowed pantyhose or the lonely bus token tumbling through the hole in your coat. But you will see legs leaping through the void, lips stretching silence into melody, ancient fables that will outlive this stage, this building, this field trip. Years later, when your classmates' value meals have been digested, their souvenir posters and t-shirts discarded, your void, your silence, will remember, will leap and stretch to breathe words into another hungry soul that will outlast even you. Thank you very much. I'm DJ Creative Soul. It was a pleasure. I'm glad I finally was able to make it out. My little boy is old enough to stay home for a little while and I can sneak off to Baltimore for a couple of hours. So, Khadija, come on, take your mic. Um, we have come.